I think they're good. How do I sound over here? Awesome. Ready? I can see that. It's it's new software trip sometimes. Yeah, yeah, let's talk about a 101 funnel that any real estate investor can use if they're trying to go consumer direct, if they're trying to contact sellers directly to make offers on their properties. You know, the, the most logical one, I would say, is get an offer on your property. You know, how much is your home worth? How much could you, how much could you cash out within two weeks? You know, something with a little sense of urgency and also gives them that, that um, monetary sort of information that they're, that they're looking for. Otherwise, they wouldn't end up on a site like yours or other investors because they, they already have started that thought.
Yeah, I think we're having one look. Yeah, Glenn was saying the same thing too. We might be having a little bit of tech difficulty where I'm the only one that's shown on the screen. I don't know why that would be. Okay. I can hear you, yes, and I can see you. This is brand new software, and sometimes, some days it works better than other days, so just bear with us for a second. Jason's going to off. How's that? How's that? Is that better? You able to hear me, Chris? Yeah, I can see you and hear you, but I don't. I just, know. Well, I just went off. I just went offline and went back online. Ask Glenn. Glenn, our our producer, who's remotely uh, chiming in. All right, we're good to go. We're good to go. Cool. All right, we're back. Back, back. in. Don't know what you guys missed, but we're just gonna take over from where we already started. So we're now we're talking. We're talking about funnels for sellers, right? So traffic sources, online online sources. Uh, Google AdWords, Facebook ads, directories, a lot of places, uh, maybe current database that you already have, places that you know seller that you can get in front of sellers, offline, mar- offline stuff, um, direct direct mail, bandit signs, door hangers, things like that. The end goal of a seller of your funnel with a seller, right here, you're trying to you know find a a certain list or a certain way to reach them and. On the other end of the spectrum, you're trying to buy their house, right? But there's so much happens. There's so much that can happen in between here. And if you can't get someone to buy to sell their house to you today, sign contract, closing, you want to make sure you can follow up with them and stay in front of them on a regular basis. No, no better way to do that than to make sure you get their phone number and you get their email address and you also get their your permit their permission to stay in front of them regularly. Obviously, you can send spam emails or direct mail as much as you want, as much as you want, but it's so much easier, so much more efficient if they come to your website, they come to you somehow, maybe at an event or whatever the case is, and you say, listen, I really want to learn about how I can sell my house for top dollar. Can you send me some information on that, right? So typical funnel, they go to your website, fill out their email address, they get a report, whatever freebies. I, I always encourage people to give as much value as possible to all their potential customers because they think about it as if you're giving me this much value for free, what's going to happen when I'm actually a client or a customer of yours? And then guess what happens? After you have their email address, the sky is the limit. Like what are some, Chris, what are some things to potentially email, just ways to stay in front of these these sellers that maybe, you know, they're they're interested and they're motivated, but they're just not ready right now to sell. Yeah, I was just about to say that. And the, the follow-up is crucial because some people will be ready today to sell. Some people will be ready in a month, two months, six months maybe. And the idea, idea is that you want to consistently follow up with them so that when they are ready to make that move, you are right in front of them or at least have been recently. So a couple things you could be sending. Um, I always like to start out with credibility for these kinds of things. Oftentimes sending something about you and your company, your staff, the deals that you bought, the the fact that, you know, uh, here's where you do business now. I mean, something that shows people that you have business going on and that you're credible and that if they go under contract with you, then you're going to close quickly and efficiently and they're going to get the money that they want. So things related to that, you know, maybe you, you drip them once a week at first. It could be even, you know, every other day. However many you want to write, they all have some sort of value, right? So if you're doing one a week for four weeks and then maybe space it out to one a month for six months, call it. I, I think that would be a, a very strong follow-up campaign. And these are so, and they're, and it's free for the most part, emailing them on a regular basis and stay in front of them on a, on a re- regular basis. I mean, you know, we, we could go into way depth of other ways to stay in front of these, these people, for, you know, retargeting and thing and things like that, but we're just going to keep it simple to, to email yeah. marketing. But, at the, but I mean, think about this, you spent money on a direct mail piece you spend money on bandit signs. You spend money on maybe online advertisements in order to get them to acknowledge you, right? Um, I don't know if I have a postcard in my office here, but you know, you spend time for them to to read this, to look at this. They may or may not be ready right now. If they are, great. That's huge. Close the deal. But you want them to respond to something by showing them value 
bringing them to your website, getting their contact information and staying in front of them as much as possible. So don't get me wrong. Like I think whatever marketing you're doing, you should continue to do it over and over and over. But think about this. Let's say you have their email address because they gave it to you to get something of value. And all of a sudden you send them an email every day for, you know, every, or not every day, every week for a year, right? 52, 52 emails. Maybe they're not ready for a year. Somebody could be mailing these people over and over and over, spend thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to try to continue to get in front of them. You're in front of them for free over and over and over and over and over. Yep. You know, when someone wants to buy their house, they know, they see your name, your brand in front of them. So you got to, so many people miss the boat on when they market to people, they try to market for the immediate sale. And that is not the case. You do not ever want to market to somebody to try to get that immediate sale right then. Because as soon as that that does not happen, and a lot of people don't get closed on the first time, you completely miss out on the opportunity, and you're never going to be able to go after them again. So go for the sale, but try to get their contact information around along the way so you can do so. Cool. Um, a lot of different funnels on sellers, but we're trying to keep this. Uh, we're gonna we're we're just gonna talk a few today. So the next one is let's talk about text messaging funnels for buyers. So let's say you're a wholesaler, you want to sell your uh, your your inventory, your deals. What better way than stay in front of somebody via text message on your phone and doing it the right way? Now, don't get me wrong. There's a lot of different ways to sell things for buyers. You could do a similar thing like we just talked about with the email marketing. But in this case, we're talking about a text messaging system. So there's, so there's software systems out there that you can say text hard money bankers or text um, the word HMB, for instance, to my phone number. So let's just call it you know, text HMB to 45678, right? And all of a sudden you text me because you want to be in my buyer's list. And now I have that potential buyer's contact information. So you either do online ads, offline ads. Maybe you have some business cards that you go around with and you, and you uh, give this to people at, at meetup groups. And if you want to be on my buyer's list, text this information and you'll be on the list. Yep. Yeah. And put it everywhere. Um, it can be on your website and your social marketing business cards, like Jason said, basically put that everywhere because that's your snowball as a wholesaler. The more that you can grow that buyer's list, the stronger um, your business is going to be, the quicker you can move deals. And yeah, I mean, just, just talking about email marketing versus text message marketing, that is one way, obviously you have to do it with the right kind of permission in email or with text. And that one, see, a, a lot of people aren't going to be giving out their phone number. They don't want people in their texts. That one they will because they want that information, it's important to them, they need deals to buy. And right now, email, broadcast emails have an open rate around 10% and text messages are something like 95%. If you get a text yeah. message, you look at it, always, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah, if, it's a you are, yeah, if you're communicating with people in that way, your response rate is going to be huge, huge. Yeah, it's a no-brainer. I mean, I would argue that pretty much there's a lot of other things you can use text messaging for, and we certainly do inside our business. But it's a great way to stay in front of any, everybody. You know, all of a sudden, hey, you have a new property on 123 Main Street. You want to send out, send it out. And all of a sudden, hey, bing, it's on my phone. Have all the details on it, call to action, whatever the case is. No better way to stay in front of somebody. Um, cool. All right. All right, hold on. We got a message here for Todd. Let me see what this says. Let's see everyone else here. All right, so that's a good question, Todd. Um, obviously, you want to email or text individually on BCC and email, so other buyers, sellers uh, don't. Great. Question. So, so okay. So, so when we talk about email marketing, Todd, um, I would recommend getting like an email service, like an email autoresponder service. Not even recommend. You have to. Otherwise, it's not legal. You, <laughs> Fair can't, you can't BCC people. You have to have people opt into a proper system that allows them the opportunity to unsubscribe. If you are blasting people with a BCC, that's not like can spam compliant, whatever that law is from back in the day. So you have to use one. Long story short. Yeah. Okay. So compliance police told us we have to use one. But, yeah. <laughs> but, that, but that's fine. But more importantly, you have so much more flexibility when you do use one. The way you're sending out an email, you're sending it out manually every time, right? In this particular case, you get a system like eye contact. You get a system like constant contact. You get a system like 
a Weber, MailChimp, Infusionsoft. There's hundreds and hundreds of them out there. And the way that we do that is if you're on our email list, chances are we did not write that email today that you were receiving today. We queue up emails. Um, we set up autoresponders. So let's say in this particular case, we're talking from, uh, from a, a seller email. You have that set up that every time that seller goes to your website and requests to get something for free, or request something from you, that email is all that email was pre-written and it was written once and you never have to write it again. And it'll continue to go out every time that person takes action. Now, obviously we can get, it's a little bit, it could get complicated based on what you wanted to, uh, but you have the software for it. You know, go look at MailChimp. MailChimp's pretty simple. It's pretty inexpensive. It's a few bucks a month. Um, these, you know, the more people you have, the more expensive these softwares get. But hey, let's be honest. If you have a lot of people in your database, you know, you can afford to, you can afford to pay a little bit more for it. Um, while we're on that conversation, there's two different types of, let's just call it email campaigns, just basic ones. So you have your autoresponder ones where you say, after this person does this on my website, I'm going to send them email one today, two tomorrow, three the next day, four in week one, five week two, whatever the case is, right? So those are automatic. And then you have something called broadcast emails that typically um, work in real time. So broadcast emails could be time sensitive stuff like, hey, come see me at an event. Or, hey, we just were in the news. Or, hey, um, here's a special I'm running, whatever the case is. So those are typically real-time stuff. And then the autoresponders are stuff that can just kind of go evergreen stuff. It can just go on and on and on and on. So, yeah, Todd, good question. Even if you have a small email list, I would definitely start off by getting like a MailChimp or something like that. And it'll, you know, maybe it'll be a proactive step to help you grow your email list because you, no B, you know, BCC or anything. That doesn't that doesn't get you really far. And uh you know, you want to you want to treat this like a business and and grow it, and you want to automate things. So, do we finish text messaging for funnels for buyers? Where are we uh, leave off? <laughs> yeah, we got uh we got we got distracted by the email service question, but I, I think we pretty much I think we pretty much covered that wholesales text messaging to their buyers. Super yeah. Pr- way. pretty like pretty way to- yeah super super simple clean um. You know, again, get creative of ways that you can text message things. Again, there's text message compliant, just like anything else. But if somebody you have, you know, a banner everywhere you go, including the back of your business card that says, hey, get up to date properties, text me um, or, you know, get up to date properties, contact me and they text you and then they opt into your text list. It's compliant and it's great. And that's the best way to do it. So and there's also like there's no reason to spam anything, spam email, spam text, like for, take compliance along, you know, away from it. You want to be able to reach people and you want to get your message into people that want to hear it. As far as I'm concerned, people that are on our email list, one or two things have to happen. You either need to buy from us or you need to unsubscribe, <laughs> right? Eventually. Sure. I mean, if, and don't get me wrong. I'm not saying if you're not, in, if you're interested in our, in our service and you're not ready to buy, that's okay. Stay around, get as much stuff as you can. But the, the ultimate goal is for them to buy or to fall off. That's just what it is. So, you know, think about that. It's not, it's not about like, it's one of those things that it's quality, not quantity. All right. So if you're just chiming in, thanks for joining us. Uh, we do this HMB live, uh, Facebook live broadcast every Tuesday at 11 AM. We do it live. We talk about real estate. We talk about marketing. We talk about finance. We talk about business, pretty much the four things that we like to talk about on the regular basis. That's why we talk about this. So yeah. if you have it, so we're not have any, here, that's what we're talking about too, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're talking about this with or without you guys. <laughs> so uh, if you have anything related to this comment below today, we are uh, on topic of marketing funnels for real estate business. Uh, the funnels and creating marketing campaigns is, is fun for us. So happy to answer any questions that you have. Comment below if you have any questions. If you want to be on the show live, and you want to be a show guest, uh, there's a link here that I just put up on the screen. You see it in the comments section. You do have to be on, I believe, Google Chrome or this software be live won't work. Okay, so we talked about funnels for sellers. We talked about text messaging funnels for buyers. Let's uh, dig into something a little bit more creative. Funnels for contractors. And you can use funnels for everything, right? Just you know, remember, get your whiteboard, get a piece of paper out understand kind of what a funnel looks like in general. Actually, I should show you this funnel right here. While we're at it, not to get off subject, I'm going to take this this uh, camera with me. Whoa. All right. 
Can you can you read that thing on the far left, Chris, or no? Is it too far for people to see? Uh, I can see that it is a funnel, but I cannot read it. Got it. Okay. So what that funnel looks like, for the most part, even though you can't really read it, is you start all the way to the left where it's huge. And that's all <laughs> – everyone that's interested in real estate – in the DC area and the Baltimore area and the Philly area, right? That's everyone who's interested in real estate, right? And then the next call, and that's like, you know, on a, on a broad level, you can, we'll, we'll get this picture back to me, but on a broad level, that's, you know, the, as broad as you can get, right? You got every single person who's in real estate, real estate agents, real estate investors, real estate brokers, appraisers, everything, right? And then as, and you're all, you're big, right? I'm gonna try to stay like this. So you're big. And then as you start coming down, now you're just, you know, targeting people that are interested in real estate, investing, just real estate investing. Then you work your way down and then it's everybody that's on our Facebook uh, likes, then everyone who's on our email list um, and kind of just goes all the way to here. And then we wean them down till we hit our actual specific clients that we're doing deals for. So the goal of it is you start broad and you work your way down to your target client and you learn a lot about your target client just from all the data that you have from working it. So sorry to get off topic. Funnel, funnels for contractors. Um, <laughs> so surprisingly, you can use this format, this, this funnel to try to hire contractors and retain contractors or any employee for that matter, right? You still go through the same process. So think about this. You go into Craigslist and, and no matter how busy you are as a real estate investor, no matter who you have, keep in mind that contractors turn over a lot. Um, hmm. Everybody everybody on your team will turn over, right? So you're always constantly looking, even if you have perfect contractors and I'm just, not that I'm picking on contractors, that's just what we're talking about in this case. It could be any type of staff member, or any, any anything, anything, a partner, whatever it is, right? So typically you have everybody that's working for you over time, you want to try to increase the productivity, try to get them better and better, and then wean off the lower end, right? So you cut the 10% fat and you try to, you try to uh, always step up the bar. So imagine this. You jump on Craigslist. You put a few Craigslist posts looking for hire, looking for contractors, whatever it is. I'm just using Facebook as, as a front door example. The goal is learn how, to, learn how you can apply to work with, the top real estate team or, or local real estate investors and join our team, right? And the goal of it is for them to come to a website into an opt-in page. They came from Craigslist, didn't cost you anything to market. It was free advertisement. They came to your website. They opted in to learn more about how they can work for you, right? How they can do some of your construction jobs. And, you know, the sky's the limit after that. You take them through an application process. You get their email address. You figure out kind of the best way that you want to do that. But instead of you having to proactively try to go after contractors all the time manually, you have an open-ended funnel that they constantly apply with you. And there's a constant flow. And maybe they made the cut. Maybe they didn't make the cut. If they didn't make the cut, you're continuing to email them and stay in front of them on a regular basis. But wouldn't that be a nice thing to just have a stream of contractors just constantly trying to apply to work on your team right now over and over and over? Yeah, I think uh, in addition to having that flow of additional ad additional possible sources of contractors, I think you're also going to raise your quality of service provider too by making them jump through a couple hoops, right? Like you're going to have them in essence apply and qualify themselves. And a lot of contractors who don't who, like who aren't terribly professional, who don't have their stuff together, they'll fall off. They won't, you know, submit pictures of jobs or, you know, upload a copy of their license or fill out like a detailed application, they'll fall off. And just by doing that campaign, not only are you going to have more to choose from, you're going to have better contractors to choose from. So I think that's a, a really smart one from the people who I've heard that do do that. Yeah. And I mean, think about it. Think about that principle. You can apply that to a lot of different, a lot of different things. I mean, why not always try to get better and better and better, better contractors or, or anybody in a real estate in, in, in your real estate um, circle? you know, grow it. So hopefully this was kind of a good example of how you can use different funnels. I mean, we have whiteboards all over our office. We're constantly mind mapping funnels that we could do, not just marketing campaigns, everything. not just marketing campaigns, everything. Every, everything. We figure out the best way to get, you know, 
something in the front door and then wean it down to the best. I mean, we have a very large email email list, um, but our percentage of clients, our percentage of closed loans based on our entire email list is minimal, right? Hundreds and hundreds, thousand cl- thousands of clients compared to 40, 50,000 email emails that go out hundreds of thousands of emails that go out a month, right? But you wean them, you wean them down. So, you know, a, f- a few lessons, obviously you don't just want to spam everybody and put every single person in there, but you try to, you try to get a target audience. You try to get your target client. You try to put them into your funnel and two things happen. You want to build credibility along the way so you can show that you're an expert. You can show them that if they want to do business, they sh- should do it with you. So you're building credibility, but at the same time, you're applying hints of a call to action of how you can get them to buy from you <laughs> and over and over and over. And that necessarily, that doesn't necessarily need to be like, I want to buy your house. 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 You know, it could be like a case study or a success story of how you help somebody. Yeah. You don't have to say, do this without them knowing or implying that that's what's going to happen. Yeah. I always try to provide some kind of value for whoever's reading it, whatever it is they want to see. In addition to your call, your call to action, you can definitely have one of those, but provide them some kind of value and then ask for the sale. <laughs> yeah, well, that's what it's about. And yeah. people know if, if you guys are providing me this much value and it does not cost me anything, it is free to provide this value to me. What the heck? If, if I get all this for free, what the heck am I going to get when I actually become a client of yours? Right. Um, so figure out on this end, your target client, your target customer, who you can make money off of right here and all the way over here, get as many people as possible on a broad level, targeted but broad, and then work them through your tunnel, your funnel over, you know, as, as far as your funnel goes. And these funnels should last forever. Like I said, sure. they, either, they either buy or they get out of your funnel. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. And one thing that I would mention when it comes to these different kinds of funnels, funnels and whichever one applies best to your business. Maybe you have a couple of them. Um, maybe you don't have any yet and you're just looking to get started. Start getting very focused on that snowball effect of what you're building, that every day you go into work or maybe you go to work and then you come home and work on your real estate business. What's being built that day? Are you adding buyers to your list? Are you adding potential sellers to an email list? Um, is it a, a text message sort of thing that you're building? And really, really focus and, and start to enjoy the fact that this thing went from one to two to 12 to 35 people on a list. Cause that's a real thing. That's a real thing. And people always get stuck at zero because they think that a thousand is too far away. Right. So I, it's going to be too long for me to get to a thousand. So I'm going to stay at zero. And that's the trap that you want to avoid because every single name in that database has value, whatever the funnel may be. You know, you can have six people, you can have nine people, like some, I don't know, videos of ours that don't get a lot of traction and we get 18 eyeballs from YouTube or something like that. I'm like, yes, 18. It's a lot yeah. more than zero. Each yeah, one eight, has value. Each one. And keep in mind, 18 times 10 video. Let's say each video, we'll just use that as an example. You have 10 videos, 18 each, that's 180. What happens if you have 100 videos? What happens if you have 1,000 videos? Over and over and over. Our entire goal of what we do right now is filling up our funnels over and over and over. We know who our core client is, and you do too. You know who your core seller is. You know who the core buyer is of your properties. You know who you know, the, the, the contractor that works best for you, whatever the case is, right? Mm-hmm. You know your core client. So go out and put as many, 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 many people as you can to try to get as many of those core clients that you are, unless you're just too busy that you don't have the, the you, you uh, don't, don't take this the wrong way. When I say too busy, I mean, you already have more than enough money than you need or more enough volume than you can handle. I know you're too busy, work busy. Everyone claims they're too busy, work busy. I would, you know, I can challenge you on that because I don't believe that you're too busy. And if you are, chances are you're probably working on the wrong things, but that's another that's for another that's, another, show. that's another that's another that's another conversation the important part is to make sure that you're doing this this is marketing this is this is a this is high level too i know we talk about 101 but 101 will get you to the most successful business you need just by doing the basics oh, yeah. of this oh yeah 
we we know exactly how much it costs how much it's worth it to us to put somebody interested in real estate in our funnel. We know the exact cost of it because we know that as long that we can, we can buy leads, uh, spend the time to manually bring in leads, whatever the case is, we know exactly what that case is of what our percentage is that will back out and turn into an actual client, how much it costs, how many we need. And you will too. Again, we started with an email list of zero. We started with, um, a database of zero, <laughs> right? We haven't been in business all that long. So you got to start somewhere and you got to constantly do it. Yes, sir. So cool. Well, hope everyone found this useful. Um, throughout the week, we're going to be on again live next Tuesday at 11 a.m. So throughout the week, if uh, you have any questions or comments, feel free to comment. Uh, I'm going to put a new broadcast link up because every week we got to put up a new one. So as soon as the show's over shortly, I'll put up another one. We'll come up with a cool, intriguing topic. We never, we, again, we don't have to talk, you know, your questions don't have to be related to our topic. Um, it can be anything, real estate, business, finance, marketing, things like that stuff that we love talking about. Uh, but we do try to put one topic in place just to, just to keep the flow moving, just to keep everything moving. Um, you know, it, it's an interesting way to do it. So, Thursday, Tuesday, sorry, I always say Thursday. Tuesday at 11 a.m. is when we do the H&B Live um, Facebook Live show. And we will be on next Tuesday at 11 a.m. So if there are no further questions, we will uh, we'll, we'll wrap up. But again, 